We talk about uh, methodology boxes, and there are three methodology boxes um, that we want teachers teaching out of. The first one is the traditional box, which is teacher-centered, sort of sage, sage on the stage. There are a lot of one-way exchanges, mainly teacher to student, and there's a higher effective filter. There tends to be more anxiety when you're in the, the uh, traditional box. The responsive box is student-centered, so teacher now is more playing the role of a facilitator more two-way exchanges versus one-way exchanges. And most times those two-way exchanges are student to student. And therefore now there's a lesser anxiety in the room because most of our, my time is spent with my classmates. And the third box, the culture responsive box, is in effect the same as the second box, except we're gonna add in now elements of culture that will be validating and affirming to who students are. So I'll go back to the discussion protocol and the turn and talk. So when students turn to each other to talk, I know they're going to be using overlap. I know they're going to be using sociocentrism. And I do the activity from a strategic standpoint because I want them to do that because that will feel validating and affirming to them. That's the purpose of the culture responsive box. We create a welcoming and culture responsive school environment by first and foremost showing love in particular, outrageous love to everyone. And it sounds hokey, um, but it's an intangible that is a necessary ingredient. And I think it's about warmness, it's about kindness. It's not about some of the cheesy things that schools do where maybe they have sort of like these great entrances into the school and everyone's pictures up but it lacks, it lacks the love, right? So for me, the first thing is for us to say, how do we show our love to our families and our community members? And that's gonna happen in a variety of ways depending on the school and the context. So I don't have a prescription list. What I have is, what I have is a thought for the school or building leader to say how we had the conversation about how does it feel if I'm Somali and I'm walking through these doors? If I'm Mexican, I'm walking through these doors. Where am I shown the love? Where am I shown the outrageous love? And I think if they will, they will ask those questions and then answer those questions, it will give them the answer for what becomes a welcoming environment. I don't think it's about pictures and images. I think that those, I've seen those as, um, you know, part of it, but it, without the love, they don't mean anything. And so that's why I don't, I don't push that too much. The question is, do you have, are you sending a message of outrageous love? And that's where it starts. So our goal is for all students to be successful academically. That's our goal. Um, this is not feel good program. You know, we don't want people, you know, rah rah just around who they are, right? In the context of school culture, we want all students to have success academically. And so CLR, for me, is, um, it's like a, a prerequisite to content area teaching or those things that students are going to need to pass the test or whatever. You got to have, you got to set up the right sort of uh, environment for them to want to learn, they feel safe, trust, they can trust others, and ultimately they feel validated and firm. So I always follow Hattie's um, notion of uh, mediated effects. And in Hattie's um, synthesis of the research says that there are just some things that impact things that impact achievement. And so I've always looked at culture responsiveness as one of those mediated effects. It impacts student engagement, and in fact, it impacts building relationships, it impacts school and cultural climate, and all of those things impact achievement. And that's, that's to me, that's, that's the chronology of it. Um, so I'm trying to help those things that help students be, be academically successful, right? We get all the time well, is my child gonna, uh, this is funny to me, 
is my student going to learn be better reader? And I say, I, uh, I hope so. Like, but can I say because you validate and affirm him, he's going to be a better reader? No, I cannot tell you that. But I can tell you by validating and affirming him, you're going to create an environment that would allow you to then teach him to read that will then enable him to be a better reader. And that's how we look at it.